since I pay, ugh, made the video a couple days ago about <clears throat> going through more of the shelves here in the bookstore, I found even more books to put on eBay. <clears throat> Remember, I found three that first day, and now I have a total of 18 and this one here, which I'll talk about. So that's really good um, that I found that many, and I'm not even done yet with um, this whole section. But as you can see, I got through a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. I'm a, here is where I'm ending today. So I've got those few books and then two more shelves here, which are, looks to be, I don't know, a variety of stuff, games and puzzles. <clears throat> we'll see. And some more new age <clears throat> books. So I've just, you know, laid out some of the stuff that we're keeping um, cover for, first so that people can see it until we start to get more books to fill in the shelves that kind of thing so i did end up finding a bunch though which is great and by the way today's october 23rd 2024 it is a wednesday and yeah i'm here finishing up i found this which might not look like much but apparently it's super rare uh, this is the 1927 edition of general laws and regulations of the household of Ruth. Oh boy, I don't remember. There was an explanation of exactly what it was, what it is. Um, and of course, I'm not going to remember. Whoops. Um, but I found one copy, not on eBay, on Abe Books. And it was going for $569. <clears throat> and it said it was extremely rare. Um, the book also has this flyer inside, which might even make it more valuable. If we can see it, I don't damage it. Hold on. Okay, it is Propositions for the Grand Household of Ruth. Da da da. It, I don't know, is this a flyer? Gotta be careful. Looks more like a pamphlet. Maybe it was used as a flyer, a pamphlet to sort of uh, promote it. But very old. I assume that this is from, like it says, the 10th biennial session to be held in Chicago, Illinois, beginning Monday, September 10th, 1928. So that's crazy. This is from 1928, um, which apparently it is. <clears throat> so that will go into the sale. And we will see if it's really going to be garnering a lot of attention or or go for the kind of money that a book seller is asking. Here's some of the titles of the other ones. Black Man Emerging, this is signed. Great Pyramid, Proof of God, The Light Beyond, this is signed, I believe. This one we can't read. The, these two were, were rare. Um, this one here, Sword of Wisdom. McGregor Mathers and the Golden Dawn. <clears throat> this one turned out to be pretty rare, as well as this one. Kabbalah, 10 Luminous Emanations. This one doesn't go for that much money, but it's pretty rare. The other one is actually more rare. <clears throat> and then this one appears to be super rare as well. A Black Explorer at the North Pole. Um, I think it's from 1969. And it's about this guy, uh, Matthew A. Henson, who went to the uh, North Pole with, the guy's name was Peary, I believe. Admiral Robert E. Peary. He summited the North Pole in, what was it, 1909? And this guy was with him. And turns out that the only copy I found, hardcover copy of this, was on eBooks books going for 150 bucks. So I'm listed for 200 on on eBay and see what happens. So that's a good find. Here's some other ones that I found as well. I um, won't go through them, but um, just, you know, <laughs> some key key things like Black Explorer at the North Pole. That sounds totally unique and, and random, and you know, I've never come across it before. And just the artwork of this and the color, that type of thing. Uh, when something's signed, of course, it can be worth money, not always. <clears throat> Those are things to keep in mind. This you know, I had to look it up to, to see if it's actually something that's, that is valuable or unique. 
but that's why you can you know look up on eBay first if nothing's there go to Abe books you usually find it if a books doesn't have it just look it up on Google and it might be at a random bookseller's website, um, you know, like a, a, a rare vintage bookseller's website. And then you can get more information on it as well and see what they're selling it for. But usually between eBay and Abe Books, you can get enough information about um, whether or not it's rare, how much it's going for, that type of thing. Because I, as of right now, I'm going to list it for $599 based on that Abe Books price. But that might be ridiculously high. I might get very little interest, or maybe that's a great price. And, you know, somebody's going to come across it and, and want to buy it, or they're going to offer, let's say, 300, 400, or 200, whatever. Even if I got 200, 150 bucks for this, that's pretty awesome, considering that it was literally just sitting over here on the shelf. Um, and no one was going to know what it was, or pay attention to it, or probably even look at it, to be honest. Um, so that's why I'm going through the shelves, you know, the previous owners, they didn't sell online apparently, and they would have, they had rare stuff here, <clears throat> as you can tell by everything that I keep finding. Um, and you know, having a, a place like this, they had this place for 12 years, which is great, but the chances of someone coming in finding or, and wanting or that particular person coming in and wanting to buy a super rare item is unlikely it's always possible but unlikely uh so that's why i continue to look through everything and and i i see that there's a lot of books on the sci-fi or the fiction side including science fiction but also non-science fiction uh that are signed and i bet you there's money in some of these as well so that'll be the next journey of going through all the fiction <clears throat> and i bet you i'm going to find a bunch that are signed first edition first printing that kind of stuff that i'll probably end up selling online as well um so you know you can have a bookstore that is that has a lot of first editions that has rare vintage collectible books and you can market it that way you can um only have those kind of books and be very niche and probably build a following and do well but you're still more than likely going to want to be selling if not on ebay at least through your own website um and marketing it that way so that you get a bigger audience than just locally with your brick and mortar business because then it's going to be tough even with a reputation of having that kind of stuff to sell a lot of it quicker and um if you don't sell your items you don't make enough money uh to pay for your space and uh you know pay for your life so <clears throat> it's it's fun to dream about having like a bookstore or whatever it may be you know uh, but you got to make enough money bottom line and this pile here of stickers was basically all the stickers that were on the inside of <clears throat> the first page of most of the books instead of writing it in pencil you know lightly writing it in pencil they <clears throat> decided to use little stickers which unfortunately end up taking off part of the page the surface of the page sometimes ripping a hole in it um and yeah so that's a pain but i'm clearing all those out and then i know uh if a book if i've gone over a book or not because i know that i've written the <clears throat> in pencil the the price that we want here in the store so that later on <clears throat> you know going through the inventory i'll know well this one i already went through this one i didn't that kind of thing but eventually i'll have gone through everything so then it won't matter <laughs> but for now that's another helpful little um you know uh what do you call it clue as to whether the i've put this book out already or not um because sometimes as i'm going through it there'll be books put in there that i've already priced <clears throat> uh but you know i don't remember the book because i've gone through so many yeah, so keep, we're keeping this moving. Um, hopefully, it gives you some ideas about, you know, vintage collectible books and what to look for. Topic is important. Um, the way it literally looks, the colors, the font, uh, that kind of thing. If it looks like it's, I mean, just because it's older doesn't mean it's worth the money. But when you open it up, if it's signed, if it says first edition, first printing, uh, which it often won't. But if it does, it can be worth some money, especially older books. 
<clears throat> um, but just look for the bizarre, very niche, something you've never thought of or heard of before. And that is worth looking up at least whether or not it's going to be worth your time to <clears throat> list on eBay or, you know, if you're outsourcing, it's kind of, you know, something that you have to figure out, right? Through research on eBay, research on Abooks, uh, even research on Amazon or just generally Google. You get a lot of information that way and figure out <clears throat> if it's worth it. And if it's a book you can't even find a copy of, then maybe you really have something that's worth some money um, and could go for a lot. But you uh, never know until you list it, put it at a high price, and see if there's any interest. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.